Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, and Lori Blankbein, the former CEO of Goldman Sachs, each have a net worth of about $1 to $2 billion. But that's pretty much the cap to where investment banking can get you. Of course, that's a lot of money. But you make even more in private equity where there's seemingly no limit. The founder of Blackstone is worth $33 billion, the co-founders of Apollo $5 to $10 billion, and the founders of KKR $8 to $9 billion each. Private equity investors make a ton of money, and in today's video, we'll first discuss the way PE funds do deals that enable the industry to be so lucrative, then talk about how PE compensation works, and lastly, how much you make at each level. All right, now first up, let's go into how PE funds do deals and use leverage to juice returns. First, a quick note on structure. Private equity funds are investment vehicles that raise capital from limited partners or LPs like pension funds and endowments. Private equity firms use these funds to buy, restructure, and operationally improve businesses, which are known as portfolio companies or portcos, and usually sell them after five years to earn returns for their fund LPs and employees. While there are various strategies, private equity firms are most known for a specific type of transaction called the leverage buyout or LBO, which is where a PE firm will use debt to purchase a company, just like when you use a mortgage in order to purchase a house. And let me show you guys why leverage really juices returns. Let's say you were going to buy a company for $100 million in cash, and five years later, you sell it for $200 million. That's a $100 million gain on your $100 million investment or a 100% return. Pretty good, right? Then let's say instead you bought that same $100 million company, but used only $20 million in cash and funded the remaining $80 million with debt and sold it five years later for $200 million. You then pay off the $80 million in debt. And so now you have a $100 million gain on a $20 million investment or a 400% return. Now imagine that instead of making one $100 million investment, like in scenario one, you make five $20 million investments in five companies and fund the rest with debt and sold each for $200 million. That would make your net gain $500 million from a $100 million investment, which is much better than your $100 million gain in scenario one. Then imagine doing this at an even greater scale all day, every day. And now you can see why PE investors just make it rain and make a ton of money. Now, if you're watching this video because you're interested in breaking into private equity, then you're definitely going to want to check out this newly announced PE certificate investing program that's being offered by Wall Street Prep and Wharton, which is where I'm currently getting my MBA. This program is sponsored by the top firms like Blackstone, Carlisle, and KKR. And over eight weeks, you can learn at your own pace through this online course that's taught by Wharton professors, Wall Street Prep's PE program director, and real PE investors, including David Rubenstein, the founder of Carlisle, and Martin Brand, the head of North America PE at Blackstone. We'll cover topics like the PE deal process, valuation, how to think like a private equity professional, and more. By completing the program, you also unlock access to the alumni member database, fireside chats with PE investors, and exclusive networking events with the world's top private equity recruiters. This program runs twice a year in the spring and fall, and be sure to register by the early registration deadline in order to get $200 off, and also use my code RARELIQUID to get an additional $300 off. And I'll leave a link to all of this down in the description below. All right, now moving along, let's discuss how PE compensation works. There are typically four parts to a private equity investor's compensation. First is your base salary, which is notably already really high at a minimum of $150,000 at most top funds. Then there's your annual year end bonus, which incentivizes investors to not randomly just rage quit when they're at max stress levels. Then there's carried interest or carry, which is a percentage of the fund's returns. And lastly, there's the option to co-invest into funds, which is where you put up your own money at your firm's funds to earn more returns. One important thing to note is that PE investors earn their compensation through a fee structure that includes a management and performance fee. The classic structure is known as 2 and 20, where 2% of the fund's total assets under management is paid to cover employee salaries, rent, and other operational costs, while the 20% performance fee is paid off the amount the PE firm earns above a hurdle rate like the average market rate of return. So for example, if a $100 million fund grows to $200 million by the end of year one, the PE fund gets paid $4 million in management fees and $20 million in performance fees. Next, for both carry and co-investing, there are two things that really change your compensation, which are your fund size and fund performance. Starting off with fund size, let's imagine you had 10 investors at a PE firm at a $1 million fund versus a $1 billion fund. Both funds have a 2 and 20 structure and return 20% in a given year. In scenario one, the PE investors at the $1 million fund would earn a performance fee of $40,000, while at the $1 billion fund, the investors would split $40 million. Next, looking at your fund performance, the internal rate of return or IRR is typically what people really focus on in private equity, and this makes a huge difference over the long run. So again, let's imagine you had 10 PE investors at a PE firm and both start with a $100 million fund. But over 20 years, the first firm has a 5% IRR, while the second one has a 20% IRR. 
Due to the nature of compound interest, that first fund will grow to $265 million, while the second one will grow to $3.8 billion at the end of those 20 years. And so, as you can see, your fund size, aka how big your deals are, and your fund performance, aka how well you can invest, will hugely impact your private equity compensation. Second, the great thing about carry and co-investing is that they're both considered long-term investments, which means that as long as they go over a year, you're going to be taxed at the federal level at 20% rather than your marginal tax rate, which is going to be over 37%. And this is known as a carried interest tax loophole. Third, while carry and co-investing are great for private equity investors, it's important to also note that it's a super slow and drawn out process to actually earn that compensation because first you have to buy the company and then you have to operationally improve it over time and anything can go wrong in business. And then once you finally sell, that's when you earn the performance fees. As a result of all this, this is why private equity investors typically stay and don't really leave because the more you stay at a private equity firm, the more you earn. So you get those golden handcuffs where it's harder and harder to leave. And it's also usually better to join a private equity firm where you can last, even if it's smaller at let's say $500 million versus a larger $10 billion fund where the culture is super toxic and you get overworked and you're just gonna leave after a few years. Now, if you want to break into private equity, you first usually have to go through investment banking. And I'm building my own how to get into investment banking course, which will go through everything like industry overview, recruiting overviews, behaviorals, technicals, and more. And I'll leave a link to all of this down in the description below. All right, now last up, let's go into how much you make at each level in private equity. We'll be using the annual PE compensation report from Hydrogen Struggles. And keep in mind that they usually focus on the top performing funds. So the numbers are going to be skewed to the high side. First, we have associates who usually join PE firms two years after banking, and the range depending on firm size, including your base and bonus, is $235,000 to $390,000, and you can see only a portion receive a small amount of carry. After around three years, you then become a vice president, where you earn $350,000 to $788,000 just from your base and bonus, so you can see the range really can widen depending on your firm, and most VPs receive carry. After another three years, you become a principal and your base and bonus goes from $580,000 to $1.1 million. And pretty much everyone gets carry, which adds even more to your compensation. Next, we have partners and managing directors. And this is where things get really varied and can go as little as $630,000 to $2.7 million, not including carry. Last, you have the final managing partner level where things start to get really silly and could go from $1.1 million to tens of millions of dollars or more. All right, so that concludes the video. And if you're wondering what private equity investors even do in order to earn and justify this kind of compensation, then in the next screen, you're gonna see a video about what is private equity. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks so much guys and peace out.